All right, let's have a conversation. The Detroit Lions have, I don't know if you want to call it a breakout candidate. I don't know if you want to call it the most critical player for the Detroit Lions. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, to be honest with you. But the Lions have a position. They have a player, a rookie, that is needing to break out. And there are some people that have been commenting on these channels. I did a video about him before. And they're worried about an old comparison. And when I say old, I mean only four or five years ago. Um, but we are going to talk about it. We're going to talk about why he's one of the most important players. And we are talking about Terry and Arnold. We're going to talk about an old uh, comparison to Jeff Okuda. And I'm going to talk to you about the difference between these two guys. Because when you look at relative athletic score, when you look at some of the things, there's a lot of similarities. But there's some key differences that we're going to talk about as well. But we're also going to talk about what he has done thus far in minicamp and OTAs and things of that nature. In OTAs, he should be one of the best players out there, right? I mean, he absolutely should be. But in minicamp, when the vets come in, for him to be able to take snaps against the likes of Amon Ross St. Brown and get PBUs while guarding him when St. Brown is just torching everybody else because he is St. Brown is an elite wide receiver in the National Football League. I think a lot of people don't realize that he's being paid like he's an elite wide receiver. He produces like he's an elite wide receiver. He's just not in the mold or the body of what Lions fans have seen as an elite wide receiver. I'm not saying you don't recognize it. I know you recognize how good he is, but he's not Calvin Johnson, right? And that's because you don't have guys who are 6'3 to 6'5, 240 pounds that run like a gazelle just coming off the stockpile all the time. That's what Calvin Johnson was. So, no, you're right. He's not. All right? He's not. But he is a good player. And Taron Arnold went, uh, honestly, like blow to blow with him. So let's talk about this. There was a sideline report article that said Arnold has made an immediate good impression with everything he has said and done. He was highlighted by reporters for his performance during minicamp last week, and he's showing he's ready to be an immediate starter at the cornerback spot opposite Carlton Davis. He's certainly got the swagger and confidence he'll need to succeed. So let's talk about right there. That's the first comparison between Terry and Arnold and Jeff Okuda. At this time last year, Already, but not last year, but like five years ago, whenever Okuda was drafted, already, already the reports coming out where Okuda got beat on this and it took him a while to recover from it. Or Okuda got beat here and man, oh man, was he mad. And, and there was talks about how he was the ultimate competitor, but he's going to have to learn how to have a quick memory. Tell me if you've heard this before about Jeff Okuda and needing to have a quick memory. All right, that is a major difference. While when we're talking about Terry and Arnold, it's simply he's showing he's ready to be an immediate starter. He's got swagger. He's got confidence. Confidence was something Okuda always lacked, even coming out being like, watch the tape, watch the tape, you know, and, and all of that kind of stuff. Terry and Arnold does not feel any need to say those types of things. He just plays. All right. If week one were this week, Arnold would be starting for the Lions. It's not even training camp. Presumably when pads come on in training camp, that won't change. It feels like he will be clearly he will have to be clearly beaten out if not to start on the opposite of him. All right, now, what about cornerbacks coming right out of the gate and being a starter? What does that look like? Well, as of late, there's been a large amount of corners that have been good year one. We're talking Sauce Gardner, right? We're talking different players like this that have come out year one and been impact players. Terry and Arnold doesn't have to come in here and be the number one and guard the number one player. You can decide what you want to do with him. You can decide if you want Carlton Davis to follow the best player. You can decide if you want Terry and Arnold just to work one side of the field. Like a lot of these things, a lot of corners, rookie corners that have had success aren't starting by traveling everywhere. They start doing that year two. They give them a side of the field that they can get comfortable in. They can play man on the outside receiver, and that's it. Like, that's how they do it. All right? Um, all that's good. All that is good. Um, and naming one player will make it or break it to every Super Bowl contender, um, Alex K. 
had Arnold for the Lions. This was in an article on Bleacher Report. He said Arnold could be the next cornerback who changes his team's fortune from the jump. The Lions need him to be great, especially after their defense got surgically dissected by Brock Purdy during their brutal 17-point collapse in the NFC Championship game. Again, watch the whole season. That was not the microcosm of what this team was. Um, but quarterbacks torching the secondary kind of was. Um, in fact, the last five or six weeks, and I'm talking regular season and playoffs, uh, that was kind of the game plan was let quarterbacks throw all over. We're just going to play man defense. We're going to blitz. We're going to stop the run. Go ahead and beat us with the pass. All right, so let's remind you of who he is with strengths and weaknesses when it comes on draft profile, and then profile, and then I'm going to compare that to Okuda, and you're going to see the difference. Strength, 600 receivers, chin in place, tight press man from snap to whistle. He is a great man corner. That's what he is. All right, agile feet and slippery hips. Accommodate challenging cross-face transitions. Thank you. This is the things you want to hear from corners, that they're willing to be aggressive. You want to hear that they have smooth or slippery hips. Smooth coming to balance and showing comebacks from side shuffle. Very good top-end speed with above-average burst to close. All right, we know he didn't test with a ridiculous 40 time, and I think that's what freaked everybody out. Urgent ball challenger competing hard for ball, for both space and the ball. Standout ball production over two years span as a starter. Jars throws loose with heavy strikes and is aggressive in run support. Um, all this is a prototype. Aaron Glenn Corner. Works through blockers and gets after it as a tackler. So what's he weak at? Feet become indecisive when, um, when hit with release fakes. Lacks eye balance, losing sight of play development around him. In other words, he's going to struggle a little more in zone coverage. That's why I think he's a guy that should just stay on one side of the field. Offers excessive cushion for easy catches from off man and quarters. Again, not press man. All right, room for improvement on jump ball play and positioning and needs to do a better job of dropping pad level to wrapping up to tackle. So a lot of the weaknesses are kind of in there as like, ooh, these are nitpicky. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at our boy Okuda. Here's what he struggled with. Needs to play with consistently disciplined eyes. Some inconsistencies digesting route combinations. That hurts you both in man and zone. All right? Uses, and here's, here's where you should have known you don't take a guy um, third overall. Uses feet over fluidity to swing his hips open. You want fluidity with the hips. If you are not fluid with the hips, you are not a good corner. All right? Slight gear down, making lateral transitions from pedal. Room for improvement with route anticipation. Average instincts. Average instincts. An early response from zone. All right? Wow. Yeah. All right? Stays attached to blocks from big wideouts too long. Needs to be diligent and contain duties against outside run. So Jeff Okuda's weaknesses. Run stopping. Stiff hips. All right, slips uh, and average instincts. When you look at Terry and Arnold, um, lack of eye balance in zone. All right, and that's really the biggest. It's all with zone. That is why you are going to have a difference in who these players are. Not to mention reports coming out about one has swagger and one just got angry. All right, this is not bad news. For Arnold, yes, he tested similarly, as did a bunch of premier corners in this league have the same athletic profile. The difference is up here, and you can't see him, but in the hips. It's all in the hips. Name the movie. It's all in the hips. Come on now. Did you know it? It's stupid. I'm so sorry. Happy Gilmore. All right, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.